Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, just wanted to take a couple minutes, probably take about five minutes or so, wanted to show you how to add a cool Chrome extension that might be helpful for you and your students uh, in, uh, in class. Uh, basically, the name of the extension is README, and what it does is it's a text-to-speech reader. So if you have students that are getting hung up on the reading, whether it's science, social studies, math, language arts, whatever the content is, uh, they can actually scan whatever it is that they're reading, and it'll read it for them. There's a little more to it than that, but basically that's what this extension does. Uh, we found that it could be very useful for students that need tests read to them, uh, students that are remote and may not and have that in, as part of their IEP, uh, but we're not there to actually read it to them, so this gives them an option to do that. Um, I'm thinking of students that may have a difficult time with reading and may get lost in social studies, nonfiction, text with big words and weird names and, and things that might be hard for them to pronounce that might really hurt their comprehension. Uh, so uh, pretty cool tool, very easy to use. Uh, first things first, if you go to the Marketplace, Google uh, Workspace Marketplace to look for this, you won't. I couldn't find it in there. So I actually searched for it on Google. I just typed in text-to-speech. Uh, read me, and I'll add a link to the email when I send this video out to all of you. Uh, but ultimately, it's this one right here, read me text-to-speech reader. Now, you might find other ones that are useful, and by all means, if you find something better, go for it, use it. This is the one that I found was pretty helpful. I've already shared it with my students, and they had some fun playing with it today. Uh, this Mine says remove from Chrome because mine's already added. Yours would probably say add to Chrome or add to your computer or whatever. You just go ahead and install that. Down here it will pop up. It's installing. It takes a couple minutes, if that, for it to install. Uh, once it's installed, it will be here in the extensions list. And I have mine pinned. So you, you may just, after you install it, you might wonder where it's at. Uh, and it's going to be in that... Um, puzzle piece here. So you click that, open up your extensions. I pinned mine to my computer just so I can make it easier to click on and open and use. I don't know if you have to. I just found that easier that way. The first time that you use this, you may have to actually open it up. And when you open it, uh, I already had something scanned here. The, this box right here where the microphone is, that might be blank. And if that's blank, you'll need to choose one of the Voices. You're all, there's hundreds of different voices you can use. They all have different dialects and accents as they talk. Um, I encourage my kids uh, mainly, especially if they're having a hard time with reading, to choose the, I believe it was, United States American English. So you have uh, British English, which is really sophisticated sounding, and then you have U.S. English. And the reason why I told them that this might be best for them is because some of these other dialects may pronounce words differently. Uh, and the accent might throw them off. So again, fun to play with, but I don't want to make things harder on a student that might be having a difficult time to read, so, uh, or difficult time reading. So I would recommend you choose one of these U.S. English ones. Um, I think Caroline does a really good job here. I think it's Caroline. It's either Caroline or Elizabeth. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, make sure you have one chosen there. It took me a minute to figure out how to get it set up the very first time I use it, but once you have somebody in there, uh, then it should be able to read for you. So the way this works is, let's say teacher gives you assignment, hey, for my class, we use Tennessee History for Kids quite a bit. So I may tell them to go to Tennessee History for Kids. I already have that open. They navigate to the website, and I'm, I might ask them to go through this section. This one's on Old Stone Fort. If you've never been there, it really is beautiful. Uh, but all you're going to do is highlight the section you want it to read to you, and then you can right click. I do the two finger tap on the uh, scroll pad on your computer, or you can right click on a mouse. Both of them work. It'll pull up that right click menu, and you click right here where it says read text. And let me give that a whirl and see if it pops up. So I'm going to pause it there for a second. Um, it wasn't Caroline that I like. No offense, Caroline. Uh, it's actually, I believe it's Elizabeth. I, I, I like the pace. I like the fluency of uh, Elizabeth's uh, reading. So let's see what how she sounds different. Uh, 
So it actually wasn't Elizabeth. I think it was Carolyn that I, or Caroline that I, I did like. So you can choose, a, you know, um, a male voice, a female voice. You know. So that one has pretty good fluency if you listen to it. Uh, so the way that I, I, I've navigated this is you highlight what you wanted to read, you right click on it, you read text, and that's it. It's really that simple. You don't have to do much more than that once you have it set up. Um, if it's helpful, if you once you have it set up, then if you click that little icon, it pops up and this gives you the option to change some things. I like to keep it, once I have it set the way I want it, I like to keep it as that little reader there doesn't cover up much of the screen. Uh, but again, you can just click that and it disappears if it is covering your screen. So a few things you can do that are pretty fun with it. You can click on the, the settings here. And if you click the settings, you can do things like you can speed it up. So let's listen to what that sounds like real quick. And of course, you can also uh, slow that down. If that's too fast for you, you want to get your homework done real quick and go all the way to, uh, you know, the, the two, twice as fast. Or, uh, you know, if you want to slow things down, a little bit of a slower pace, maybe you got some time on your hands and you want to have some fun with this, you can slow it down and go ahead and play that. This is the fast. Now here's the slow. That is really funny to me every time that I've done it. So uh, one is the normal speed. You can also change the pitch. So if you want them to sound like they had a bunch of helium in their voice, uh, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to click right here and see. Oh, that is still funny to me every time I do that one too. Hope you're entertained. So you can change the pitch. Uh, I was hoping that this would make it real low and slow, uh, but it just makes it sound like they have a very scratchy voice. So just a di few different things that you can play with with the text. You get the idea. So uh, so those are some things. You can change some of the settings. You can change the pace. You can change the volume. That might be applicable. Uh, I haven't really messed with the hotkeys but I really do enjoy a, uh, you know, that British accent. I really think it sounds dignified. So uh, you could try a British accent. Plays. There. Sounds very official. Uh, and so, like I said, you can play with it a little bit. You can change the voices to really whatever it is that, that you want. And I think the kids have a lot of fun with that. I would caution you if you do that in class, it's going to waste a lot of time if you uh, just mess with all the voices. So just give them the basics and uh, and they'll figure it out. So I'm going to go back to Benjamin here. So you can take text and you can add it into this. Um, but uh, here's some things that I thought were really helpful. So uh, if you go to like your Google Classroom, for instance, uh, I have a number of books set up in my resources section. I've scanned some books in, and I'll assign some of the books and pages for them to read. And so uh, I'm going to show you a couple of those. This first one is one that I scanned in. This is a PDF document. So because it's PDF, you can't scan it if it's PDF. And so I'm going to open it with Cami, which I've already done here. So uh, let me X out of that and click it here. So this is that book opened in Cami, and in Cami, if you didn't know this, you can a lot of times it'll ask you to do an OCR, and what that does is it scans it for text. It takes your PDF and looks to see if there's any text in it. If you click that and scan that for text, once you do that, then you can actually highlight whatever it is that you want it to read. And once you can highlight, again, you just hit that right-click button, and it'll read the text. Okay. So you get the right idea. Uh, again, you can change the fluency in, in the speaking voice to, to whatever fits your, um, I don't know, situation that you're in, the, whichever one you like. 
Uh, one thing I did notice, I did, there was one dialect that said in 1,818, and that's not really necessarily how we would say that as we're reading it. So you might see some flaws in it like that. Uh, if you listen carefully, he said tennis, C. And so that, that might mess up the fluency for kids that, um, you know, reading might already be difficult for them. So there might be some things like this that you have to be careful with and just make sure that they're reading through it and can understand what is being read. A lot of it just depends on how this is scanned in. So I have an example of that. This is an assignment. This is a book that I just recently scanned in. And when I open this in Kami, uh, one of the problems are when it did the OCR and it scanned it in, it did not recognize some of the wording. And because it didn't recognize some of the wording, you'll hear here in a second when I go to let it play, it doesn't read it correctly. So I've already scanned this in. So if you listen to this sentence, uh, listen to the word confederate, and then at the very end here, it leaves out the word at. So let me go ahead and do that here real quick. So what ended up happening is when this scanned it, it did not get, because of the way it's copied in, it didn't read the word confederate correctly. Uh, so it said confedcrate. Uh, so it just, it didn't read that as an E, it read it as a C. Uh, you'll see there's a couple other errors in here. It left out the word at the end. It just said freed the end of the Civil War. So again, you have to be careful with um, those documents if, if a student is already having a hard time with reading. You don't want to confuse them with but that kind of stuff. Outside of that, though, I feel like this is really a, a helpful tool. Um, this is the part that I thought was pretty cool, too. I do a lot of my tests on Socrative, so I can open up a test in Socrative, and as the student's taking it, that student should be able to, as long as they can highlight it, uh, you can go ahead and highlight the question and the answers and let it go ahead and let it read it for you. So you can see I really like the Australian voice, so this I had to open in a different page, and so it's got the Australian voice in it. But it's pretty neat that it'll actually read the test for them. Uh, this is my cop, like the teacher version, so you can see the correct answers on that one. Obviously, the students wouldn't have those correct answers, but you sh they still should be able to highlight that test, and it'll read it to them. And, uh, you know, from there you can play with it and see what else it does, but that's all I have for you. So I hope you found it helpful. Again, that's uh, README, and it's something that you can find on Google if you just search for text-to-speech, and I'll add that link to the email that I send with this video. I uh, hope it's helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Other than that, keep fighting the good fight. Appreciate all of you and everything that you guys do for our school.